Welcome to the Handed Down Kitchen, where we bring recipes out of the past and back into the kitchen. Today we'll be sharing with you an Edwardian recipe for a good old-fashioned rum bubba. Rum bubbers are lovely soft yeast cakes that have been saturated with a sweet rum syrup. You often see smaller individual sized rum bubbers, but this recipe is for a large one that will provide about 8 servings. We found this recipe in our copy of High Class Cookery Recipes, which was used as a class book for pupils of the National Training School for Cookery between 1909 and 1912, when the next edition of the book was published. And this is a really interesting book because its purpose was to teach recipes that may be used by pupils who'd go on to secure jobs as cooks in grand or stately homes, or well-off ladies who just wished to develop their own cooking skills. And there are even some adverts in the back of the book that advertise cooking ingredients that are still around today, like a tour of suet and Brown and Polson's corn flour, and oven and pan shops in London not far from where the school was based. We'll have to do a video just explaining the history of this book and the school at some point, but turning back to the recipe to make it, you will need the following ingredients. 227 grams of double zero plain flour, 170 grams of caster sugar, 140 milliliters of milk, four eggs, 140 grams of butter, 14 grams of fresh yeast, 40 grams of currants, 425 milliliters of water, and 70 milliliters of rum. The very first instruction that our recipe gives us is to actually follow the steps on the preceding page to make a Savaron dough. Savarons are yeast risen cakes that were created in France in the 19th century as sort of a new take on the rum bubba. So to start with, just warm your milk over a low heat until it's tepid. Dried yeast wasn't invented until the 1940s, that's at least 31 years after this recipe was published, so it would have been fresh yeast like this that would have been used in the training school. Take just a quarter of a teaspoonful of the sugar and cream this into the yeast to activate it. And within about 10 seconds you'll see the consistency transform from a solid to a paste. If you can't get hold of fresh yeast, I'm sure dried yeast would work just fine. Pour your yeast into the milk and just give these a quick mix. Next, sift the flour into a large bowl. The recipe says to use Vienna flour, which is a very fine flour used for making certain breads. Plain double zero flour is a fine substitute for it and that's what we're using here. Make a well in the middle, and then into this, pour your yeast. Combine the flour and the yeast, mixing first with a wooden spoon. And once this starts all coming together, just give it a quick knead with your hands. You just want to form it into a nice round ball of dough. And we're going to add more ingredients to the dough later on, but first it must rise, so cover this with a cloth and set in a warm place until it's doubled in size. Once your dough's risen, it's time to work in the rest of the ingredients. This is where it gets a bit messy, so start by cracking in two of your eggs. And the recipe says to work the eggs into the dough well using your hands. We did try to do this using a wooden spoon first, but trust us, it doesn't work. You have to get your hands in there to combine everything together properly. This takes a good few minutes, but it does eventually start coming together. Now 
Once this is all combined, in another bowl, cream your butter. Crack in the two remaining eggs and then combine these together. Pour the butter mixture into your dough and then the recipe says to beat this very well until it all comes together. And the best way to do this is with a wooden spoon. You'll know when it's done because it will have the look and consistency of a very runny porridge. And once that's done we move on from the savaron recipe to the actual rum bubba recipe. For the next step, you'll need a well-buttered large bubba mould ready. This bundt cake tin will do just fine. The recipe also says you can use smaller individual sized tins, but we wanted a bigger one, so this is what we're going for today. And sprinkle your currants around the base and the sides of the tin so that these stick to the butter. Then pour in your dough. Cover this again with a cloth and leave to rise as much as possible, ideally until the dough fills the whole tin. And then put this in a preheated oven set at 180 degrees Celsius to bake for about 20 minutes or until the dough is cooked all the way through. As your cake bakes in the oven, make your rum syrup. And while the recipe says to make a hot rum syrup, it doesn't actually tell us how to make it, and there isn't a recipe for a rum syrup in the whole book. So we've had to use a recipe for a rum syrup we found in our copy of Cookery Illustrated and Household Management, which was published in 1936. So start by putting your water and sugar into a pan and bring this to the boil. Boil this until the amount of liquid reduces to about half the quantity that you started with. So keep an eye on the level of water, you don't want to boil this right down as the syrup needs to be quite liquid so it saturates as well as possible into the cake. And the cake's really going to rely on this syrup as without it, it doesn't have any sweetness whatsoever. Take your sugar syrup off the heat and pour in your rum. You want to do this right before you take your cake out of the oven as the syrup should be as hot as possible without burning out the alcohol. And now our bubba's ready, turn this out onto a large serving plate. Just before serving, baste your bubba with the hot rum syrup. And that's it, a recipe for rum bubba as taught to the pupils of the National Training School for Cookery between 1909 and 1912. And from what we know of the purpose of the classes this recipe was taught in, it's very likely this exact dessert would have been served in many a stately home, luckily enough to employ a lady trained at the school. We hope you enjoyed this video, if so please leave us a like, and if you'd like to see us recreate more antique recipes, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can also find full instructions for this recipe and many more on our website, linked in the description box below.